So as many of you probably know, we do quite a bit with electric commuter bikes. And today I wanted to talk to you about how to really pick the best electric commuter bike for you. For many people, they're moving from a car into an electric bike. For some people, they might be moving from a non-electric bike or some other form of transportation. But there's a lot of things to consider. And many of those things might depend on where you're located, how long your commute is, what you're looking to carry with you on your commute, if you're looking to commute at night. There's all sorts of details that come into play here. So first I want to just talk about, you know, what sort of distance you might be covering because that's an important factor to consider. And for the most part, we say that most electric bikes on average probably can do around 20 or 30 miles, or at least the ones that we offer. Now, there's a lot of different electric bikes out there and some of them might have a very small battery and maybe they might only do 10 miles or get you 10 miles of range. I'd say on average, you know, electric bike battery will get you somewhere around 30 miles. And that's gonna depend on the size of the battery um, and how fast you're going, the type of terrain you're riding on. But on average, you can think of in those terms. But there are some bikes that might have two batteries or might also have a very large battery. But, you know, so if your commute is, say, 10 miles each way, I think for the most part, you should probably be okay with just a single battery, average size battery. Um, and what I say average size, something like four or 500 watt hours depending. Now keep in mind, I'm speaking about specifically working with a bike that might use pedal assist. And if you're using a bike with a throttle, generally you're gonna have a little bit less range. So that might be something to consider. Or if you have very large hills, that's gonna be another factor. So if you think about the range, uh, you gotta think about this distance that you're going. You know, you can charge at work if you need to. Um, quite often we find that people who are commuting, they might often use a higher level of assistance level than they might otherwise use just for recreational purposes. Because if you're riding at a higher level of assistance, you're generally not going to have to put as much effort in. So maybe if you're wearing nicer clothes to commute, you won't really have to worry as much about being sweaty. I understand, you know, in the winter time, this might not be as much of a concern, but it still comes up as well. So it's really something to think about in that regard. But it's also about just getting there efficiently. So using that higher level of assistance will generally allow you to get to work a little bit faster. So speed is a really important factor. For me personally, I really enjoy riding a 28 mile an hour bike when I need to commute somewhere or I need to get there fast because I can generally cut my time down pretty significantly. And if I'm in an urban area where there's a decent bit of traffic, generally I can get there much faster than a car can. And I usually feel pretty good about that. Now you can also use a 20 mile an hour bike and the benefits of that quite often is that you're gonna have access to more trails. Some trails specifically might limit where you can ride a 28 mile an hour bike. And there's certain places where you can't ride a 28 mile an hour bike in general, but this is something that you, know, you might wanna think about. But I find that having that ability to ride a bit faster, sometimes when you're commuting, you don't always have the option of where you're gonna ride. So sometimes you have to mix it up with traffic and being able to go a little bit faster can at times actually feel safer when you do have to ride with traffic. So after you think about the range and the speed of the bike, you might wanna consider about what type of bike you wanna get. You know, we do see some people that commute on mountain bikes, but generally speaking, a commuter bike is gonna have a little bit different characteristics than a mountain bike. And some of them are even starting to cross this divide between a mountain and a street bike and having a bit more versatility because there might be certain times that you're riding on the street and maybe there's some times that you're riding off the road. Actually, recently we spent some time in Germany, and I know other places are like this, where when you're commuting, you might find yourself riding through a forest trail. And that's the great thing about riding a bicycle, that you might not have that option riding in a car or other types of transportation, where you might not have the option to cut through a forest or something like that, or cut through some sort of uh, light off-road trail. Generally speaking, there's bikes which are considered commuter bikes, and usually those bikes will have certain characteristics to them. Now, from, from our side, a commuter bike, usually you're gonna see it has fenders, a rack, usually a rear rack. Sometimes it'll have a rear rack as well as a front rack. Generally, they'll have lights as well. Now, if you're only riding during the day, you might find that you don't necessarily need lights, but 
you never know, you might end up getting stuck out there and having those lights is a really great safety feature. And many bikes even run with the lights on during the day, which increases the safety and visibility of the bikes. You can think about, you know, do I want a standard frame bike? Do I want a bike with just, uh, you know, that, that top tube? Do I want a bike with a low step that's easier to get on and off of? Maybe you're wearing certain clothes like uh, dress pants or a dress or something like that, and it's not as easy to step over that top bar. So having a bike with a low step will make it much easier to get on and off the bike and to really accommodate your clothing. Some other details in that same regard, thinking about the frame style, maybe think about the geometry of the bike, how it's set up and the ergonomics. Because if you sit a bit more upright, you'll generally have, uh, you're, you're not kind of like flexing your clothing as much. Some certain clothes you wear for work or you have to dress professionally, maybe if you're wearing a suit or something like that, you might have trouble just kind of leaning over, stretching your arms out. But if you sit more upright, you're generally gonna be able to work with that clothing and feel a little bit less like stretched out uh, in that way. And, and I think that a lot of people really appreciate that. So that's an important detail to consider. Now think about this though, because there might be a bike that you see that it is set up to be a bit more sporty, but you wanna be more comfortable on it or be more upright per se. Um, and you can change these parts on the bike, change the handlebar and stems. Generally from our side, I'd recommend going with a bike that's built to be set up like that, but it is possible to make those adaptations and accommodate your specific needs a bit more. Um, you'll especially find that uh, bikes which are high speed, they might be a little bit more sporty and, and they might often have that more sporty position, but if you sit a bit more upright, you can get that more comfortable position. It's also better if you're riding in an urban area, you could have a bit more visibility and be able to turn your head better than when you're sitting down, you actually can't turn, you, you, you limit your field of vision there. So that's an important consideration, especially when you're riding in urban environments where you might have a lot of different obstacles around you. Or you could also consider a multi-person bike. I mean, I don't know that I'd want to commute on that, but you never know. But on a serious note, you might actually want to consider a multi-person bike. It might not be to carry, you know, eight people on it, but it might be to carry a couple of kids with you or maybe carry a friend or something like that. So cargo bikes are a great solution for that. If you want to carry kids, you know, as part of your commute, we find a lot of people, especially in urban areas, are using the cargo bike drop the kids off, then go to work, and then on the way back, pick them up before they go home, or whatever the case may be. So there's a lot of options around that, and it's an important thing to consider. So I know that I'm probably overwhelming you with all this information as far as how to pick your best bike, but I think it's important to make these considerations and make a good decision from the, from the start, because a lot of people come to us from the beginning and they say, I want a bike for this very specific purpose, but I try to encourage people just to think about the possibilities of what you might use the bike beyond that because many people get an electric bike and they end up wanting to use it for many other reasons. But overall, it's really important that you're comfortable on the bike, you feel safe on the bike, and it meets your needs. Some other things that we often usually want people to consider when thinking about an electric bike for commuting is maybe the cargo carrying capabilities. We talked about cargo bikes for carrying kids, but maybe you need to carry your laptop with you. So having a rack on the bike and making sure that it could accommodate the specific weight that you're looking to carry is really important because the weight of those racks, what they can accommodate at least, can really vary. So that's an important consideration, I would say. Some other details you might want to think about is the drivetrain of the bike. That's the gear. So you can have a normal derailleur gear, so it's a chain and the several different uh, speeds which you can switch to. Or some of the bikes might have what's called an internally geared hub. That means that all the gears are inside the hub and this uh, generally is a lot cleaner than having the external gears. It's also generally a little bit easier to maintain and keep in service and if you're locking it up at a rack it's less likely to get bumped and you know kind of hit into uh, hit at a true if you will and thinking about service I think it's really important that you're either comfortable and performing some level of service on your own or you work with a shop that's local and and they're able to assist you with some of the different needs that you might have 
I think some of the things that are really important to be able to handle on your own is how to fix a flat. I mean, some people consider, say, you know what, I'm not gonna worry about it. I mean, in a place like New York, generally, you have a bike shop always within a couple blocks of you. So maybe it's not as big of a deal, but maybe you're, you know, riding after hours and you get out there, you're, you know, caught out there with the flat. So having some of those tools with you or at least being prepared on how to handle that. We find that some people, especially in New York, for example, or other cities, what they might do is, uh, you know, if you were to get a flat, maybe they call like a, a car service or maybe you have a, a friend or a family member that you can call in that time of need and, you know, have them transport you in the bike or assist you in some way. So important to plan ahead in relation to service and maintenance and, you know, these on-demand on repairs that, that you might need. And a really big trend we're seeing specifically with drivetrains these days is going with a belt instead of a chain. And the nice thing about using a belt is it's really clean. So especially if you're commuting to work, you might find that you're wearing nicer clothes and you're particularly concerned about getting grease on your pants and the belt really alleviates that issue. There are other ways to mitigate that by maybe using a chain guard or even some Dutch bikes use what's called a chain case. So it's a fully enclosed chain. So it's still using a chain, but it's not exposing the chain to your clothing, which uh, is really important to consider. So that's something to think about. I think that there's other ways to deal with this. One thing you could do is like put a strap around your pant leg or roll your pant leg up, but a belt handles this really nicely. And not to mention, one of the great things about a belt is it generally lasts a lot longer than a chain. So you have longer maintenance intervals because if you're commuting, especially over longer distances, you might find that you're gonna need to per perform maintenance on your chain and drivetrain more often than not. Some other things, if we wanna talk just a minute about maintenance, because I think this is an important factor, some other details to consider in relation to that is tires and brakes. So those are some of the things that wear out the most often when you're commuting, especially over longer distances and um, regularly. So tires, you generally wanna get a tire, or generally, if you can, get a bike that's already that already comes with a tire that's made for the street. And what that usually means is that it has good puncture protection and it has a tread which is appropriate for the street. And that might improve the efficiency of it. If you ride on the street with a mountain bike tire, you might find that that tire has less puncture protection and it's generally gonna have a higher rolling resistance. So you're gonna to have to use more energy to go the same distance. So I really like bikes with wider tires because they can handle all sorts of different terrain. I ride a lot in New York and the roads there are pretty rough. Even riding out here, I might find, um, right now I'm in California, I might find that I'm riding on the street, but maybe I'm riding through some sand or there's some potholes and having that wider tire is gonna bring a little bit more comfort and a little bit more stability as well. So we spoke about lights, um, but I think it's important to consider if you're riding in a very dark area, you might want a bike that has brighter than normal lights because some lights are really just to be seen and they're not to see with. Some of the more powerful lights, they can really light up the road and give you really good visibility. So another detail to consider when you're commuting with an electric bike is security. So how are you gonna lock it up or how are you gonna keep it safe? Now, some people might have the luxury of being able to bring the bike into their office or have a specific secure place to store the bike, but not everybody has that option. So you might wanna think about what type of locks that you need and, and certain bikes, maybe they come with locks or you might need to add them on. So it might be an important factor when you're shopping for a bike to think about those details and think about, you know, how much you might wanna spend on the bike or like, you know, if you are consistently locking up, stuff like that. We did a really great video talking about uh, security. So you might wanna check that out if you wanna know more about securing your bike. And we also did a great video on bike insurance. Now this is a great thing if you're consistently locking up outside in a less secure area, having insurance will give you the peace of mind and you won't feel so limited in what you can do with the bike. But some people don't actually have to lock it upside, outside or they might find that they wanna bring it inside and they can't bring a normal bike, 
but maybe they can bring a compact bike or a folding bike, you might have an easier time, say, bringing in an elevator or putting it under your desk. I know in certain places, bringing a folding bike inside is just like bringing luggage. Certain buildings might limit you in bringing a full-size bike inside. However, there are some places like New York, for example, if you have room in your office to carry your, to fit your bike, the building has to give you access. I know that sometimes buildings might give you trouble, like, oh, we don't want the bike coming through the lobby or this and that. It's actually a law in New York City that the building has to allow you access to your space with your bicycle if you have space to store it there. So one more detail that I think is really important to consider when you're thinking about a commuter electric bike is the price of the bike. Now, many people might go in one direction and say, you know what, I just wanna get a really cheap bike because I'm gonna be locking it up outside and I'm concerned about security and that sort of thing. I think that it's important to consider some other details when you're thinking about the price as far as safety, what sort of utility you're gonna get from it. A lot of people are replacing their car with the electric bike and when you consider the factors of how much it actually costs to own a car and maintain it and put gas in it and everything like that or insurance, those things change pretty dramatically. So some people find that they can invest a little bit more in an electric bike and find something that's really gonna meet their needs well and hold up over the long term. I think one of the things to really consider in regards to this is that when you're commuting with the electric bike, you're generally gonna put a lot of wear and tear on it. So starting with a bike that's pretty solid and can hold up a bit better, or maybe have a drivetrain that's gonna last a bit longer is an important consideration. And I think it's something that shouldn't be taken lightly to say like, oh, I'm just gonna buy a cheap bike to get me around. And you know, especially thinking about how dependable that bike is. I think that's something that's uh, really, really important. So I plan to do a lot more videos just talking about commuter bikes and supporting commuter style riding and, and you know, just different maintenance videos and talking about the different bikes and components that might make a lot of sense for commuters. We already made many videos on specific commuter bikes. But uh, you know, I'm always looking to hear from you if you have other questions about you know, what's gonna make the most sense for you or you know, what's the best choice or that sort of thing. So please feel free to reach out, leave some comments below. We're always happy to help and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. All right, well, see you soon. Just like, you know, the important detail. Oh boy.